Let's look at anonymous functions and how to name them correctly. For anonymous functions, the first and most important thing is that all parameters should not have a type. So instead of having a type, simply remove it and only use the name of this parameter. Let's look at another bad example. Here inside our anonymous function, we define the type and this is not what you should do. Also, you see if you define the type and the name, then this is basically repetitive. As the reader, you have no more advantage if you read both of it because this name is basically repeated. All right, now we have removed the type from our anonymous function. However, this is still incorrect. As you can see, this is a really long name, subscription level. And on this name, we call then some properties. And this is really long, really unreadable. Therefore, make first of all sure to choose a shorter name. And since we also call here the map method, therefore you should choose the singular form of this name that you have in front. So the singular form from the word levels is level and therefore we call it level for our parameter. So all in all, we have now these short, well-readable lines compared to these really long lines that are hard to read. Also inside of anonymous functions, the parameter name is sufficient to explain what this variable is doing. You don't need to define the type and the name together. If you want to find out the type of this parameter, instead of typing the type, you can simply hover over this variable and then you see the type of this variable. Also, if you want to go to this class user, for example, the type of this variable, then simply right click on it and choose go to type definition and then it goes directly to this class. Notice removing the type for your parameters inside of the anonymous function doesn't mean that you can also remove the type inside of functions and methods. Here we always need the type, so this is really important. If you remove the type inside of a function or method, then the type will be of dynamic and this is always wrong. So inside methods and functions, it's really important to define the type. Inside anonymous functions, you don't need to define the type since we always have more information. For example, we know that this users is a list of user and therefore Dart already knows that this will be then a user object and you can also hover over this and then you see the right type and therefore Dart already knows every time the right type and we don't need to define any type inside of anonymous functions. Next, for anonymous functions, if you have multiple parameters inside of your anonymous function and some of these parameters you don't use, such as the age and the name, you only use this user object, then it is good practice to replace all unused parameters by an underscore. And if you have multiple unused parameters, then you use simply more underscores every time. So for the first unused parameter, you use one underscore. For the second, you use two underscores. And for the third unused parameter, you use three underscores and so on. Let's also apply the knowledge that we have learned with this practical example. Here you see an anonymous function and inside of our anonymous function, we always have the type and the name. And as we have learned, you always should remove the type inside of anonymous functions. And with this, our code looks also better. And if you want to know what this is, then you hover over it and then you still know that this is a build context. Notice that you can remove this from your anonymous functions, however, not from your methods. So here inside of this method, we keep the build context inside. So here, don't remove it, so make sure that you have it inside. Let's go to the next anonymous function. Here we have the type of the parameter plus the name. As we have learned, we should get rid of the type. Also, instead of calling it value, you can then give it a better name because value is not really descriptive, so I call it instead date. Let's go to the next anonymous function. Here we have again the type, the name, the type and name of each parameter. So we should first of all get rid of the types. As you see, it is a list of double. So this means we have multiple values. Instead of calling it then values, we call it, for example, prices, since we get here a list of prices back and this is more descriptive. So make sure to always give it a good name. Next, we have another parameter inside our anonymous function and this parameter is not used inside of this whole function. So it is unused and for unused parameters, you can simply use an underscore. And finally, we have another anonymous function with a type and the name of this parameter. So first of all, get rid of the type. 
And also this name is not really good, so it always should be the singular form of what we have in front. In this case prices, therefore we take the singular form which is price and let's also change this one to price. And finally inside of this anonymous function we have two parameters context and index. Both of them are not used inside of this function, therefore if you really want to be strict then you can also replace each of these unused parameters by an underscore. But notice many developers also keep this information inside because the build context is really helpful, the index maybe also, and also inside of methods we always have the build context, therefore it is good if you keep the build context so that this is overwriting the existing context.